So, carrying on directly from the last video, part one. Now, towards the end of that last video, I was suggesting that there are people who might potentially have absolutely no trace of a mental self-image, or an ego, in other words. Those people being autistic people, or, or people with special needs in general. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting that this will apply to all people with special needs. I'm not suggesting that, but just follow me on this. So look, I myself have got an autistic son, my little boy, my little man, Edward. My son, Edward, he, he's autistic. Um, he's six years old. And he has absolutely no trace of a mental self-image. Now, you might be hearing all this. You, you might be hearing this and thinking, well, if he's only six years old, of course he doesn't have a mental self-image. <laughs> Listen, generally, I'd suggest that most children by the age of six years old will have already developed a mental self-image, maybe even by the age of four or five. So in other words, what I'm suggesting is most children, even by the age of four or five, will think something of themselves. Again, my son, however, he doesn't think anything of himself. He has no mental self-image. He knows his name, he knows his name is Edward, but he doesn't think anything of himself. In fact, it, it's almost like he doesn't even have the ability to think anything of himself. And in the same sense, nor does he seem to have the ability to think about what other people think of him. Which is actually quite fascinating, really. <laughs> Now, it is also worth mentioning, my son has a very limited understanding of, of words and meanings. He doesn't comprehend the meaning behind words. He doesn't comprehend what is conventional. Conventional in terms of social behaviour or social norms. He doesn't, he doesn't comprehend all this. Now, obviously... My son being autistic is a big determining factor in all of which I've just said about him. But listen, I honestly believe, I honestly believe that people without autism or people without special needs don't, don't have the potential to be completely free of a mental self-image or an ego. Is that controversial to say? <laughs> so for me, this, re this raises a really interesting question. And that question is this. For the majority of people who are not autistic, who don't have special needs... In early childhood, once we begin to comprehend the meaning of words, comprehend what is conventional, conventional in terms of social behaviour, social norms, once we begin to comprehend all this, is it inevitable that this is when a mental self-image will begin to form within us? To me, that's a fascinating question. I, I don't know if you think the same. but So with my son, it would be interesting to see that as he grows up and he begins to understand, comprehend the meaning of words, comprehend, again, what is conventional, social norms and all that kind of business. Once he begins to comprehend all this, it would be interesting to see if he stays, remains free of a mental self-image. Now, I should say, if he 
he begins to comprehend all this. If he begins to comprehend the meaning of words and, and social norms. Because he might not. Again, he might not for the fact that he's autistic. So, that's just something time will tell, I guess. But anyway, look. <laughs> My point of making these two videos is is simply to to discuss the, the fascinating fact that most of us have a mental self image an ego whether we like it or not and now I'm not even talking about a mental self image in the sense of we think highly of ourselves or we think we're absolutely useless or we think anything in between this. That's what I. That's what I'd call a. A surface level mental self image. <laughs> a surface level mental self image. Thinking highly of yourself. Or thinking yourself as being useless. Or thinking any anything in between that. Can we go with that? <laughs> that's a, that's that's what. That's what I call. We could call a. A surface level mental self image. I'm not even talking about that in these couple of videos. <laughs> I'm talking deeper than that. I'm talking about the fact that most of us have an underlying mental self image that that could almost be unknown. It's it's dormant, it's unknown until until it rears its head in a certain situation, maybe. Instantly making you feel uncomfortable or embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is anybody following me on all this? Now listen, uh, as I said in the last video, mental self-image or ego is often a topic discussed in 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 the spiritual world but you don't have to be all spiritual you don't have to get all spiritual and romantic whatever getting all spiritual means <laughs> but you don't have to get all romantic about talking about mental self-image talking about ego in other words to me it's actually something which should be discussed in schools for the fact that your mental self-image will govern your actions, your reactions, your feelings and your emotions. So again, the mental self-image, the surface level mental self-image, or in other words, what you think of yourself, I'd suggest is the root of how many people operate. Without even being aware. Myself included in the past, by the way. Now, it might not be possible to be aware of the deep, underlying, dormant mental self-image until it rears its head in certain situations. But, I am suggesting there can be an awareness of this surface level mental self-image. As we go about our daily lives. The awareness. Of. Mental self image. Is all that needs be. The awareness in itself. Would bring about a change. In the way you operate. <laughs> I'm suggesting. <sighs> so look. As you go about your daily life. Is it possible to be aware of your mental self-image? Or in other words, as you go about your daily life, are you aware? Is, is your mental self-image the root of how you operate? <laughs> Live your life and see. That's the answer. All the best. 
Take care.